next speaker who is here, Julio Profumo. He's the CFO of Hellbiz, ticker HLBZ. Incredibly volatile stock the last couple of days. They announced a, uh, a partnership. You don't want to hear me talk about it, though. Let's bring Julio on. Let's have him talk about it. There he is. Julio, thanks for joining EVCon. Hi, Spencer. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining today. How are you doing? I'm going to bring up your presentation and let you get into it and tell us all about what's going on here in one of the most volatile stocks this week. Great. Thank you. So thanks for thanks for joining today. Um, it's uh, an exciting time for the company. Uh, we are just fresh out of uh, the gates. So we, we listed uh, roughly a month ago. Uh, as uh, Spencer was saying, yes, our ticker is HLBZ. We're the first micro mobility uh, company listed on NASDAQ. And uh, we are an exciting growth story. And uh, we will, uh, I will now take some time to guide you through uh, our, our progress and essentially our vision. So we, we started as a, as a mobility company, a micro mobility company. Uh, we have uh, consolidated our market share uh, both uh, in, um, in Europe and here in the US. Um, let's say that uh, in the past, uh, I would say 18 months, uh, um, although uh, we, we did experience headwinds from, from COVID, but uh, uh, I have to say that these uh, months uh, have essentially demonstrated that uh, micromobility is here to stay. Uh, we have uh, continued our expansion, uh, both in the US and across Europe. Uh, consider that just in the first half of this year, uh, we were able to secure 10 licenses. And uh, in um, at the end of 2020, we had 29 licenses. Uh, definitely things are now starting to open up. Now the, the headwinds of COVID have, the, have died down and we see some strong uh, uh, progress and uh, going forward, both in terms of usage, but also in terms of openness from uh, from the cities in order to uh, to assign licenses going forward. Um, having said that, uh, our real vision here is uh, uh, we are a growth company, a growth story. Uh, we like the platform type of play, so we we see that uh, for us it's quite easy to onboard customers in a in a considerably cheap way. And in this way, just by essentially positioning our vehicles on the street. Uh, having done that, then what we really liked uh, is uh, the opportunity to offer additional services, both to our existing customers or to our new customers uh, by cross-selling different type of services. So this is why uh, during the pandemic, uh, we saw the opportunity of launching uh, uh, Helvitz Kitchen. So this is uh, our uh, dark kitchen food delivery offering. We started out of uh, Milan. Uh, we've seen uh, some good traction on, on this front. And we definitely now, now that people are also coming back to the cities and to the offices, uh, we see some uh, strong opportunity on that side as well. Uh, in terms of offering, uh, always through our app, uh, we, we also decided to, to get into the OTT type of play. So we, we launched uh, recently Hellbits Live which is our video offering, our media offering. Um, it's an exi exciting product. Uh, we, we actually uh, purchased the rights uh, to stream uh, the second division Serie B uh, soccer worldwide. We're actually the, uh, we have this exclusive deal where we can uh, offer this worldwide through our app. And uh, we just recently announced uh, two exciting deals, uh, one with uh, Fox Sports uh, and with uh, Amazon uh, Amazon Video. So um, this is a, a, an incredible achievement and we will be able to uh, stream our content on uh, many more devices, also on smart TVs, so not only through our app. Um, we definitely uh, fit in into the ESG type of narrative. So this is something that we strongly believe in. Uh, investors, uh, which we are talking to, uh, really like this type of uh, angle that we currently have. Uh, it's not so much, uh, it's not only about sustainability, the fact that we do run uh, electric vehicles, uh, we do um, recycle our vehicles, we also partner with uh, other companies that help us to recycle the batteries. Uh, we do also purchase uh, renewable energy. 
but what we also really like uh, and we are probably one of the prime examples of companies that can really explain be uh, at best uh, how essentially the the social so the s of esg uh, can be uh, conveyed and can be explained because we do have this social equity type of uh, uh, DNA. So we do enable people to move around easily. And this has been the case uh, throughout the pandemic when essentially uh, the means of transportation were, were, were not so available at all times. So definitely we, we, we did become uh, a reliable type of partner for, for the citizenships and for the cities as well. Um, we have expanded, so we are continuing our growth, uh, also our services within uh, mobility. Uh, we are one of the prime players out there who are offering uh, uh, three types of vehicles, uh, so the e-scooters, the e-bikes, and the e-mopeds. Uh, we do see this type of offering as a complementary to each other, as we are able to essentially extend our services uh, to different type of user profile. Uh, this really comes down to essentially the, the frequency and also the distance that these means of transportation are used for. Um, they're all tied into uh, a one offering, which is a subscription called uh, Elbits Unlimited. And uh, for barely $40 per month, uh, you can have unlimited rides on any type of vehicle uh, present in, uh, in our cities. Um, Definitely, we are uh, we are in a, in an extremely dynamic uh, uh, type of environment and sector. So, micro mobility. If we think about it, uh, just over the past uh, um, three years, uh, has uh, evolved uh, incredibly. Uh, we do like the the fact that uh, uh, we want to be a platform type of play. So we, we have always been uh, forward looking and open to integrating our service with uh, also existing public transportation. So um, uh, one example, one interesting example that we currently have is that uh, uh, we're able to integrate our service with the public transportation. And we see that uh, um, in a specific case uh, in within two cities uh, where people essentially commute to work from one to the other, uh, we see that people use our bicycles in the first city, they, they get to the train station, they can seamlessly hop on the train, already purchase the ticket, and before arriving to destination, they can uh, essentially pre-book uh, uh, our vehicle, is it the scooter, the bicycle, the moped that is waiting for them uh, at the train station. So they can then just easily hop off uh, and continue the ride and arrive at destination. So definitely this is our vision going forward and we want to uh, create our presence uh, uh, and partner uh, together with, uh, with the cities and also with uh, different type of uh, stakeholders. Uh, our approach is uh, is different uh, compared to some of the players out there. So we we always uh, uh, had uh, uh, the idea to to put the city first. Uh, we we do operate in a regulated market, so licenses are awarded through uh, RFPs. Uh, uh, companies uh, like us then can operate for an extended period of time and uh, and we we have an, also a, a number of vehicles the number of vehicles the max cap that we can put on the on the street uh, having said that we we run also our operations uh, um, internally so we are fully integrated on that front both from the tech point of view and from the operational point of view so this means that we are essentially uh, able to streamline as much as possible uh, our our business so we do um we do develop our own technology we're also extremely quick and efficient in terms of uh, customizing the the technology uh, to the needs of um, of the cities uh, whenever they need to or they want to have uh, specific features uh, at the same time having our own personnel also helps us uh, to be extremely um I would say to, to give priority to the quality of service. So this is now a trend that we see among the cities which are uh, extremely in favor of uh, companies like us uh, who uh, hire local employees, uh, who give uh, uh, jobs to local uh, to the local cities uh, and uh, in, 
at the same time also by having our own employees uh, for us is extremely quick to open new cities we can streamline the opening of new cities uh, and uh, scaling up for us uh, is uh, is not an issue going forward um when it comes to to safety and to uh parking as well uh, these are some of the the key topics uh, which are extremely important for local for the cities uh, consider that uh, uh, technology has uh, uh, improved considerably uh, in the past uh, in the past few years uh, now we are uh, able to essentially restrict uh, where the vehicles the scooter the bikes or the mopeds are uh, are parked we can also limit through a geofence uh, the area in which uh, the the vehicles can circulate and uh, um, the trend now going forward is that we see that uh, uh, it's, it will always be uh, pretty much a hybrid type of solution. So uh, cities are in favor of uh, a dockless type of uh, solution. However, thanks to technology, we cities also like the fact that we can assign specific areas, um, uh, specific uh, corrals where uh, we can um, where our users can can park the vehicles consider that uh, um, we also use advanced uh, um, image recognitioning so we're able also to prevent uh, uh, our users to uh, leave the vehicles in areas where uh, parking is not permitted um, uh, turning back to the vision and uh, how we see micro mobility uh, going forward, expanding and evolving. We are, uh, as of today, uh, in uh, operating uh, a micromobility service uh, 2.0. Uh, so we have uh, always been uh, uh, looking for ways also to, to monetize, uh, not only from uh, directly from our users uh, by using the service, but also through advertisement. So uh, we were one of the first ones to, to monetize on uh, on our vehicles through um, through advertisement, but at the same time we have also been uh, proactive in developing uh, um, advertisement uh, in app. So um, this is becoming uh, an increasing important uh, uh, side of the business uh, as we see that by uh, collecting the data and by understanding also how. Uh, our users are moving across the cities, uh, there is a growing interest uh, from, uh, uh, from advertiser to, to target specific, uh, uh, specific profiles or also at specific times in specific areas. Um, this then uh, takes us to essentially how we are now integrating, uh, I would say, these uh, three different uh, lines of business. Uh, so the mobility part, the, the food delivery, and the, the video uh, consumption, so the, the OTT type of play. Um, what we like is that we can offer uh, an unlimited type of subscription, uh, something similar to what Amazon uh, uh, offers. And uh, through a single subscription and a single uh, uh, platform app, uh, our users are able essentially to to use uh, different type of services that we that we offer throughout the cities, and uh, and in this way we are also able not only to um, uh, maintain and retain our customer base, but at the same time also we're able to uh, onboard customers who uh, who are not maybe specifically interested in the in the micro mobility type of service, uh, but can definitely. Uh, enter inside our platform and then use different type of services. Um, everything then is also linked to the fact that uh, our platform uh, already as of today offers uh, uh, the, the opportunity to essentially pre, uh, preload a wallet. Uh, through the wallet, uh, your, the users are able to not only pay for the different type of services, is it mobility, is it the food delivery, or is it the, the video consumption? Uh, but what we have been able to do, given that uh, uh, a considerably uh, growing part of our customer base uh, is uh, uh, comprised of um, younger generations, uh, we have been able to essentially bridge the gap between cash and uh, a cashless uh, type of ecosystem. So uh, thanks to uh, some 
specific partnerships, uh, what we're able to do is that uh, also for, I would say, the unbanked uh, type of uh, users who not necessarily have a credit card or a debit card, uh, they can easily go in one of the shops uh, of our partners and with cash, they can essentially uh, go to the cashier and uh, they can then have uh, their wallet preloaded with the corresponding amount of cash. And this is something that uh, uh, we we see as a growing type of, uh, of offering, uh, specifically in uh, in cities across Europe, but, but also in uh, in US, considering that uh, uh, we do want to 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 have our service as open as possible and uh, allow people to uh, to use our our service in a, in a slim, seamless type of way. Um, I think we have now some time for some uh, for for some questions. So please. Uh, uh, please let me know uh, if you want to to know something oh, man. more. Man, Julia, we do we do have a lot of questions. We're also running over, so let me just try to get to a couple. Uh, just to because you know we got the people in the chat. They uh, <laughs> they they want to know because they're interested. So wow, I don't even know which one which one to start. Um, let's go with uh, the, let's go with the the, the low hanging fruit. Uh, with the obvious run up in price in your stock, are you guys consider considering doing an offering anytime, uh, anytime in the in, in in the near term? Is that is that on your radar? So definitely, uh, we are extremely excited of what has been the reaction from the market uh, today. We are trading at twenty four twenty five. Um, the market likes our story. Uh, there's still a lot to come. Uh, we are now definitely concentrated on. Uh, uh, fulfilling our business plan, our expansion. Uh, we do have the funds available now to continue our expansion. So uh, to your question, uh, not a secondary in the short term. Okay. Um, can you speak a little bit on the the, the profitability uh, of your uh, deal with Amazon and also the Fox partnership? And are there other major broadcasting companies uh, that you're, you're, you're in talks with? Yeah, so um, we've been uh, we've been able to 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 sign these uh, um, remarkable deals. So uh, by offering by starting to offer our uh, soccer type of uh, content, uh, this will help us to, as I was saying before, so uh, reach out to more and more customers. So this is a first step to to something uh, definitely bigger going forward. Uh, we do look at also additional uh, content uh, uh, in the future. And uh, for us uh, is, uh, is a great opportunity uh, to uh, enter also inside additional platforms on smart TVs. So not only uh, through content that you can consume directly through our app. What percentage of, of your business is, is the media? You know. Yeah, consider that we just started, we just launched the media uh, in late uh, July, in August. So we're just starting now to, to ramp up uh, this uh, side of the business. Uh, considering that is very much linked now to the soccer uh, league, which just started in late August, uh, we are still in the initial phases of it. Why do you think your stock has been so volatile this week? So we, 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 are, uh, we are a new player. We are definitely a new player on the, on the market out there. Uh, we, we are strongly a believer in, uh, in the platform type of play. Uh, we, we like the, the idea and the, the story, the equity story of uh, onboarding customers through micro mobility. Uh, scooters are still extremely disruptive uh, just by positioning them on the street. People uh, love them. Uh, they, they, they download our app for us is, uh, is a cheap way of uh, onboarding customers. And then we're able now through different type of services to, to keep them essentially inside our, our platform and uh, offer additional type of service. Uh, we are the first type of player out there that is uh, doing actively this type of, uh, uh, of strategy. And I think the market has understood, uh, did understand that we are a strong growth uh, uh, opportunity company. So they are supporting us on that front. What, what about local transportation laws? This is also from the, these are all from the chat, by the way. Yeah. 
Um, so um, I have to say that when it comes down to uh, micro mobility, so scooters, e-bikes, and e-mopeds, uh, uh, as I was saying, we do operate in a regulated market. So we do go through RFPs. Uh, uh, we are uh, vetted and uh, the licenses are awarded then on a recurring basis. So uh, I have to say that uh, throughout the markets where we operate, there's not too much difference. So we do yeah. see uh, a flattening in terms of regulation on that front. However, having said that, we do see that the market is uh, consolidating. So uh, there are less players now on the market. Uh, there's a strong, uh, there's a high barrier specifically in the US. Uh, uh, so this is a, a strong opportunity for us to continue expansion, both in the Got U.S., uh, but Got also it. across Europe. Got it. Julio Profumo, he is the CFO of Hellbiz, ticker HLBZ. If you haven't seen it by now, Julio, thank you so much for joining EVCon today. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks, everybody.